Hi, everyone. I'm Laura. Um, I'm an artist and a web developer. I have worked with several organizations and on several projects that have open source as their basis. So I'm going to tell, um, talk to you a little bit about these projects and then go into detail about contributing to open source uh, software. If you use Twitter, uh, my handle is Alice Tragedies, so you can tweet at me and ask me questions as well during the talk if you'd like. I'm currently a manager at Travis Foundation. Um, the Travis Foundation is a foundation where we support and encourage diversity in open source. Uh, this means that we support specifically projects and, and smaller initiatives uh, that have diversity as their focus. One of the projects that you might know from this is Speakerinnen, um, which is a website that lists um, women speakers all around the world. Uh, not just for tech, for other fields as well, with the idea that um, if there is a visibility of women who want to go up on stage and talk about their experiences and talk about their, their field of interest and their field of work, it will have, um, they will become role models for other women who want to join certain fields. Um, so that's one of the projects that, that we support at Travis Foundation. I've also co-organized um, a conference called ROSConf, which took place in Vienna and in Berlin. Um, ROSConf stands for Ruby Open Source Software uh, Conference, and the idea was to have a conference that focuses on making direct contributions to open source. Um, the format was um, had, uh, for the very first part of the conference, you'd have project maintainers who would come up on stage and talk a little bit about one of their projects specifically. Um, and in the second part of the workshop, um, of the conference, you had the possibility to join a hackathon where you would actually contribute to those very same projects together with the open source maintainers. This made it very easy for uh, first time contributors to kind of ask direct, direct questions to, um, to the open source maintainers themselves. So the format really, really focused on this idea of first time contributions and not having to be a seasoned developer to contribute to open source. One other project I'd like to very briefly talk about is Rails Girls Summer of Code, which um, I have joined in 2014, and which I've been leading since last year. The idea of Rails Go Summer of Code is uh, to support and empower women in contributing to open source. Um, we offer uh, global paid scholarships uh, to support these women working full time for three months during the summer. Um, I, as I said, I lead the project, but I've actually got an amazing team of volunteers and um, part-time paid people who help me uh, to make this project a reality. Um, one more thing, maybe uh, last Wednesday, we closed up applications uh, for students. We've received 190 applications, and now in the next two months, we'll actually focus on selecting these projects and trying to see which teams will make the cut for the summer. Um, we are currently running a fundraising campaign to help us uh, fund these women who want to work on open source. So I'll tweet out a link later um, with, um, with a link to our campaign um, in case you want to donate a couple of euros um, to our cause. But let's get to the topic of my talk today, open source software. Um, my plan today is to share my own experiences as a contributor and also as a somewhat accidental maintainer of an open source project in the hopes that they will inspire you. The goal of this talk is for you to go out there, find a project that you're passionate about and start contributing with code, with design or with other things. Before we get into detail and start talking about how to contribute to open source, I'd like to clarify the term open source software. Um, on opensource.org, um, open source software is defined as software with source code that anyone can inspect, modify, and enhance. 
it's a fairly simplified but clear definition of what open source software is. Um, but I think it's a fairly good one for the purpose of this talk, so that's what I'll be using. Um, so when I say open source software or open source, this is the definition that I'll be referring to. Yeah, uh, open source software. We actually encounter open source as users every day. Even if you're not developers, you might have um, operating systems that are open source. Um, those of us that are developers use languages, libraries, and tools that are open source. If you're just an app user or if you visit websites from time to time, um, there's fairly high chances that at least part of the website or the app has been built with some form of open source software in one way or the other. So actually, open source is at the center of the tech industry and not just the tech industry, even when it's invisible. But um, why is the idea of contributing to open source software so scary? I've been that person who um, viewed contributing to open source software as something huge, um, as a huge hurdle. Um, and I'd like to show you today that that's not the way it is. But before we go into that, um, we, I want to look at why um, this idea of contributing is scary. Open source software is open. What this means is that everyone can see and inspect your code. And it's a pretty scary thing. Um, contributing is a public act and it can lead to a lot of attention that you might not want. Open source is mostly volunteer work. Um, as you might know, most open source software is free. And so a lot of companies don't actually want to fund work that goes into open source. The trend is changing, um, but there's still too few of us that are paid to work on open source software. So many of us still contribute outside of um, our work hours. We contribute on weekends. We contribute during evenings. This leads to a lot of extra unpaid labor. Imposter syndrome is real. Uh, you might have heard of imposter syndrome if you were at Women Tech Makers last year and joined um, Amy's workshop, for example. Uh, imposter syndrome is characterized by self-doubt and a constant fear of being exposed as a fraud. It's incredibly common in the tech industry, but not just in the tech industry. And what it leads to is that you might not feel like you're good enough. Newsflash, you're good enough. <laughs> um, even if you fear judgment, uh, if you're unsure about your code, if you're just a beginner, or even if you don't consider yourself a programmer or a programmer yet, um, open source is something that you can tr contribute to. And this is a point that I really want to stress. You can do it. I um, recently att attended a conference a couple of months ago <laughs> where the CTO of the publishing platform, Ghost, um, Hannah Wolf, gave a talk about Ghost 1.0. Um, and there were a few nice things that she said in her talk that sort of get, got me to think and that I took away. Um, but the main point that I took away was this one. <coughs> Contributing starts with this exact statement saying thank you to maintainers of projects you use and recognizing their value. So if you have time in the next hours, in the next days, in the next weeks, months, um, take a minute to actually say thank you to the maintainers of the projects that you use. It's, it seems like a fairly insignificant act, but it can help them a lot. As I said um, very briefly earlier, open source software isn't just code. Behind every software project, there's visible and less visible work being done. And some of you who work in the tech industry might know, okay, I'm a part of 
the tech industry, but I don't work as a software engineer, as I don't work as a, as a developer. I work in project management. I work in, um, I'm a team lead. I am a designer. Um, all of this work goes into software projects, and all of this work also goes into open source projects. So there's a range of different possibilities when it comes to contributing. Open source is design. It's user experience and it's user interface. It's marketing and community. It's also project management. Open source is testing. It's also translation and it's documentation. So if you have experience in any of these fields at all, you can become a contributor. Before we really, really get started, um, we first need to talk about the terminology uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page. And this is particularly important in a conference like this one where some of you might be engineers, but some might not. So I'd like to avoid talking about terms that you don't understand. Um, and I'll briefly go into them now. Maybe um, a quick show of hands. How many of you are acquainted with version control or Git subversion? Okay, that's like, I'd say 80% or so. Um, that's a fairly good number. Um, so Git is a distributed version control system, which programmers have been using to keep track of changes to their code and to collaborate easily with others. Um, Basically, for those of you who are not technical or not acquainted with this term, it's similar to the save function on any document on your operating system, except that with every save, you're also keeping all of the changes that have been made previously. And so as a developer, you're, you have the possibility to kind of jump back and look through these changes, which is a very, very powerful possibility, especially when you work on a big project with lots of different people. I'm not going to go into detail today, also because it seems like a lot of you actually know what Git is, um, but there's a couple of sites where you can find out about it. So the main Git website, and then uh, this really nice interactive tool called Try Git, where you can just sort of play around in this, um, in this little um, web console. Yeah, um, GitHub, who by the way, as I recently found out, is also a sponsor of this conference today, <laughs> um, is a platform that developers use to put their code online. Um, there's also other platforms like Bitbucket, for example, um, but I will specifically focus on and show GitHub examples because this is what I use. Um, keep in mind though that it's probably gonna be a very similar workflow. Yeah, if you're interested in GitHub, this is the URL. Um, one more thing that I also want to very briefly introduce is the issue tracker. Um, I'll be using this term throughout the, the talk. And basically the issue tracker is just a place where bugs are reported, where features are listed so that people can kind of take a look at it and see um, what needs to be done on the project. Um, no matter what you contribute and uh, what project you contribute to, the workflow will often be similar to this one, uh, especially when you're working on an open source project. You'll be adding a commit first, which basically just means like making your proposed change. And it could be changing code or adding a file like a logo or fixing typos. So there's lots of different ways in which, um, yeah, adding a commit works. Um, then you'll be making a pull request, which is a way to suggest your changes to project maintainers. Uh, your changes sort of get sent to the project and anyone who wants to review them is able to do so. Um, they can sort of download them to their own machine and try them out. After you suggest the change, you will uh, be able to discuss the, um, the changes with the project maintainers. They might offer suggestions or decide um, then to accept or reject your change. So yeah, after the discussion comes accepting or rejecting the change. And after that, your code will be implemented into the code base. Okay, so this is the basic workflow. Now that we've got that clear and out of the way, we can move into, um, yeah, onto the path of making your first contribution. 
I'm going to just outline some ways in which you can get started, some projects that, um, that make it easy for you to get started. Um, yeah, as I said before, a little disclaimer, I've mostly worked with GitHub, so this is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show screenshots mostly from the GitHub platform and um, from the P, uh, PR, so pull request workflow. As you may know, uh, feeling welcome to a project um, or to any, to any project will shape um, the memory of how you perceive that project. And it's the very same thing when you start contributing to, op to open source. Feeling welcome to a project will shape the memory of your first contributing experience. Having a supportive maintainer, especially if you don't feel confident, can make a huge difference. Uh, here are some signs of a welcoming community, a well-written contribution guide, a beginner-friendly beginner labels on the issue tracker, and questions answered quickly within the issue tracker. Um, I'll present a couple of projects that have been created to help people make their first contributions. Awesome for Beginners is a list of beginner-friendly projects. Uh, they're listed by programming languages, so you can just kind of, if you're a developer, you can go through them and see which, um, which programming languages you're comfortable with and which ones, um, which projects you, you might want to contribute to. Um, great for new contributors is a nice little showcase on GitHub of projects that are friendly to beginners. You might have heard of Atom, the GitHub-backed um, editor, uh, text editor, or you might have heard of Docker. Um, these are two projects that are also listed in this showcase. And then um, Bugs Ahoy is another really nice uh, really nice project. It's a little site where you can filter all Mozilla bugs by level, skills required, and by project. Uh, so you go on there and you can actually find ways to contribute to Mozilla projects, which is kind of cool. Um, alternatively, you can also look at it from another angle and look for issues that don't necessarily require much expertise. Um, so there are a couple of projects that look at um, issues and bugs that specifically don't require much expertise and that are beginner level so that it's nice to get started. Your first contribution doesn't have to be particularly significant. It can be a typo fix or an improvement to the documentation. Uh, what matters is that you get acquainted with the process. Uh, Up for Grabs is a curated list of issues specifically for, um, for contributors and maybe also specifically for beginner contributors. Then there's uh, Your First PR, which is also a really, really great project. Um, it showcases great starter issues, and they also get tweeted out. So if you're a Twitter user, you can, um, you can follow Your First PR and just kind of get um, nice content sort of delivered to your timeline, which is nice. <clears throat> I've talked earlier about the issue tracker, and one great thing about GitHub um, is that a lot of maintainers have been using labels on their issues to specifically show what kind of bug or what kind of feature um, the, the issue is, um, is like, and um, if it's aimed at beginners, for example. So the following labels, um, first timers only, quick fix, help wanted, beginner friendly, are a lot of different labels that maintainers have been using in order to support beginners in their first contribution. Um, on October 28th, 2013, I made my very first pull request on GitHub. It was a milestone for me. <laughs> um, I contributed to a project called Hello Worlds, and it was just a, just, a collection of simple Hello World programs written in various languages. So in itself, the project didn't have that much value in a way, or it wasn't particularly significant, but it really helped me to kind of make that first step. Um, at the time, I was following an online course in music programming and I was learning the basics of Chuck. 
um, which is a statically typed uh, C-like language to program music. I was just finding out about functions in Chuck, and so contributing gave me the possibility to get acquainted with the language that I was trying to learn, um, which was a really good, great way to have a win-win situation. I don't know if anyone benefited from this, but I got to make my first contribution, so yay. Um, yeah, so you might be thinking, okay, um, I've made my first contribution. I fixed like this typo, but I don't want to spend my time fixing typos on the internet, right? So, um, and that's when the search starts for your first significant project. For me, the first significant project happened almost accidentally. In summer 2014, as I said earlier, I started helping out on the scholarship program Rails Go Summer of Code as a supervisor. Um, one thing led to another, and I joined the Orga team in 2014, late 2014. I was more involved at the organizational level. Lots of stuff was happening. Then this happened. I started to be way more active in our two open source projects. There were bugs to fix, tweaks on the side to be made, features to be added, a ton of stuff needed to be done. Um, so I did this regularly outside of my, um, of my day job as a web developer. So um, what you have to take away from this and from my experience is that sometimes you're not going to find a project, the project will find you and it will track you down <laughs> and you won't be able to escape. Um, yeah, so contribute to tools or projects you use is a very, very common piece of advice for new contributors. And it's a great idea in theory. It takes into account that you know a project well, uh, that you know it as a user, that you understand its value. But it can be an issue if it has a huge code base or if it's written in a language that you don't know yet. So your experience might be helpful, but not always. If you have specialized skills, um, you can ask in your community for projects that might need you. You can specify what you'd like to work on, such as design, translation, copy editing, front end, back end. You can try out language communities on Reddit, for example, and they work too, to sort of spread the word. I recently tweeted this. I think this was, yeah, end of January. Um, I said that I wanted to get involved in contributing meaningfully to an open source project or an initiative that makes a difference. Um, I received a few responses. Um, one of them was from Firefox, actually, which was really awesome. Um, they reached out and they said, well, you can help us out and help improve Firefox. Um, here are some links to guides. I'm the person to contact if you have any questions. So this kind of behavior from um, open source project maintainers really, really helps first time contributors to get started and also seasoned developers. Um, yeah, if you reach out, people will actually answer because they need your work. <clears throat> yeah, choosing which project to contribute to is actually like deciding which organization you want to do volunteer work for. It's exactly the same. The principle behind it is the same. You're investing your time and effort to improve an initiative that actually relies mostly on the work of volunteers like you. And because your time and effort are limited, these are the questions that you should be asking yourself. Is the project important to me? If you volunteered before, you will have done so for an organization that actually means something to you. It should give you that very same feeling. It doesn't have to be political, it doesn't have to be educational, and it doesn't have to be a lot of impact, but you have to care about it. Does my work make a difference? Can I feel productive while working on the project? You should make sure that the work you do goes towards a specific goal 
and that it's important for the general success of the project. Otherwise, you might get frustrated and you might just decide that open source software work isn't for you. Do I like the community? Do I feel welcome? This is an extremely um, important point because community is important. If you're going to be contributing regularly to a project, you should feel at ease, right? And um, having great co-contributors in volunteer work is more important than great coworkers because they're the people you choose to spend your free time with. So they have to be great. Do I agree with the project's values? You probably want to work on a project with, um, that has values that align with yours. And last but not least, is there work available for me to do? It's quite rare that a project, especially an established one, will not have any issues to work on. In fact, usually the longer the issue list is, the more established the project is. <laughs> they don't always, they aren't always as productive as they seem to be, um, or it doesn't feel that way from the issue tracker. But what might be more common is that your project, the project that you've chosen might not have anything for you to do. And that's okay. You can keep it on your radar. You can keep looking for another project. Um, there are so many out there. Yeah, once you've picked your project, it's finally time to start selecting and working on your issue. I've said it before and I'll say it again, community is important. So the first thing you might want to try and do is to join the community. It's the best way to understand how a project works behind the scenes. Um, most open source projects nowadays will have an IRC channel, a Slack or a mailing list. Um, you should join and introduce yourself, maybe post something about why you want to contribute and what you can contribute with. Getting to know the community well will get you up and running quickly. This is quite specific to GitHub, um, but they've, um, GitHub has a, a file um, that you can add to your project with contributor guidelines. Um, and some, some projects have this in the README or in their wiki or in their docs. But basically the idea of this, um, of this file is that you should have in there all the information that is, um, that is important to contributors. And so as a contributor, you can look in there and see how to file a bug, um, how to make a feature request or how to claim an issue. And it kind of, if you look in there, it gets you up and, and running quickly. I recently wanted to contribute to a project where I wanted to create an issue and I didn't actually find um, what I needed in the contribution guide. So what I did was I opened an issue and I said, I'd like to improve um, the contribution guidelines because I don't think they're good enough for people who want, to, um, who want to contribute for the first time. So I did exactly that. I, um, they said, yes, that sounds great. I listed uh, some possibilities of what we could do. I offered to work on it. I did so. I got some feedback. I made a pull request and then it was merged after about a week. So that can be your entry point into a project. Follow the documentation to set up the project. Um, very often project maintainers will have gone through the setup pro process of their own project a few times only. And that might have been quite a few years ago. Since then, it could be that a few, um, uh, that all the other open source contributors have not really checked if the setup information is still relevant and it's still valid. Um, so if you try going through the project, if you try setting it up, and if you see that it doesn't work, make notes and then create a little issue or make a, make a suggestion of how the docs could be improved. Get acquainted with the project by helping with issue gardening. I've talked a lot about issues and sort of what we do with them. Um, at some point in an open source project, people have to go through these issues and they have to decide which ones are important, which ones are less important. They have to check that the bugs that have been filed like three years ago are still valid or not. Um, this kind of stuff takes a lot of time away from open source maintainers and helping them out with um, 
with this, with sort of going through the issues and, and checking if they're still relevant, can also be a kind of nice way to contribute. Um, yeah, I've said it before. <laughs> the issue tracker is a good place to start. It's the place where you find all the features, all the bugs listed. Um, just take a look at the open issues and see if anything sparks your interest. Once you found something, you can claim it according to the guidelines and try and make sure that there's no misunderstanding and that no one else is working on it. This one is particularly important because a lot of us that have been in junior positions are scared of asking questions. Asking questions feels like you're not competent or you don't understand the problem at hand. Um, but actually, <coughs> asking questions is a way for you to get acquainted with, with the problem. Um, and in an open source project, it can help you a lot because you can ask right away for clarifications on an issue you've decided to work on. Um, and you might be stuck and you might need help and that's okay. Most of the time, people will be super happy to help you. Before you submit a PR, um, a pull request, make sure that you understand the coding style and the conventions that are used in the project. Review code and make sure that tests pass. Actually make sure that you've written tests if you're submitting code. Um, and if you were in touch with a member of the community about a submitted feature or a bug that you wanted to work on, you can try asking them specifically for a code review. Be respectful of other people's time. Understand that reviewing code can take a while and you might have to wait a few days or weeks or months before you hear back from maintainers. And it, this doesn't just apply to code, right? Um, if, you're, if there's designers in the room, um, you might know that designing something, designing a UI takes a long time and there's a huge process behind it. So whatever you may submit or, um, yeah, whatever you may submit or create, it might need to go through a process, a long process before it can finally be merged. Um, so be patient. And finally, remember that this is your free time and that you're volunteering. Um, you're volunteering your time because writing code or documentation or creating a new design or creating a great user experience is what you love to do. So go for the work that you're interested in doing um, and don't get stuck on the little things that you don't want to do. Just because it's volunteer work, it doesn't mean that it has to be a drag. And finally, you can start your own project. Um, if there's a problem that you're trying to solve or a tool that you want to build, open sourcing it may be the best way to become a part of the open source community. This will give you the possibility to showcase your work and to help people get started. It will also help you to become better at what you do, no matter if you're a developer, a designer, a project manager. And a lot of people have been open sourcing things that aren't code and that aren't even projects per se. There's been um, projects on GitHub for wedding invitations, lists of resources, and a ton of other things that actually benefit from contributions from the community. So, yeah, you don't have to just think about code. It can be anything else. A brief summary before um, we move on to the next talk. <laughs> Open source isn't just code. Community is everything. Be respectful and patient. And finally, do work that you want to do. Open source needs you. Um, open source contributions come in many shapes and forms. You can get started by reporting bugs, by fixing the docs, or you can choose to work on a bigger project by offering your specialized skills. You can even start your own. Ultimately, all the points I outlined have one thing in common people. 
Software is as much about people as it is about code, if not more. It's important to see this. It's important to value this. And um, as you listen to the next few talks today, and as you talk with people during breaks, um, I want you to remember that open source is built on community and on creating things together. So as soon as you start creating things in public, you become part of this community. I want to leave you with this quote that I love by a person that I respect a lot, um, Nadia Ekbal, who's done some incredible work and research into the sustainability of open source software. Today, more people use open source, but fewer people contribute back than ever before. And everybody assumes that somebody else is doing it. Thank you.